Seven people here already. Hello, good morning. How are you? Hello, Travis. Hello, Shop the Bud. Uh, yeah, here we are again. So I was supposed to stream last week according to the schedule, but that didn't happen because life happens. And sometimes that's just the way it is. Demon Dreamer, hello, good morning. Or whatever it happens to be for your time zone. Wow, good crowd already. That's great. Um. So what do we got here? We got five on YouTube, two on Twitch, and one on Facebook. <laughs> Nobody on Twitter. Well, I don't know, actually. It doesn't look like Twitter gives stats, so. <clears throat> Maybe there's like 17 people on Twitter. Who knows? Uh, how you doing, everyone? It's uh, Friday again, which I guess is good for at least some of us, right? Um, yeah, there's been a lot happening over the past couple weeks. Boy, I... Huh. I don't think this had happened the last time I streamed, but so y'all probably know about the Etsy strike. Um, I did participate in that and, and during that week I kind of got the motivation to go, you know, it's time to at least find some kind of alternate uh, path. So what I ended up doing, as you probably know if you follow me on uh, social media, is I launched a direct shop on the website. And it's actually going pretty good. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's working. It at least seems like it's working. So I'm sort of gradually migrating stuff over to there. I'm still going to keep a presence on Etsy. Um, 
just because that search engine is really useful for me, but I am slowly sort of moving the majority of the stuff over to the direct shop. Um, it, it literally the fees I pay for the payment processor on the direct shop are half of what Etsy takes. So it's a no brainer, really. It just with Etsy's fee increase, it just it, they just take too much, particularly out of the higher end stuff. So, ah, so that happened. So I've been in like in web development world and also trying to get you know my puppet work done, and it's just it's been super super busy. But things seem to be under control. Everything's going well. Um, it's been a pretty decent month for sales, so all is well. But one of the ramifications of that. Well, actually, let's get to the agenda because that's here we go. So, yes, we're in the intro right now. We'll, we'll finish that in a moment. So today we are actually in the home stretch here. We are going for the facial features on the puppet that we built, uh, designed and built from scratch. Um, so I definitely want to do a nose because there's a technique I want to show everybody. And uh, maybe ears, hopefully eyelids and maybe even teeth. We'll talk about that. Well, what we're gonna do most of the day is plan the final features, uh, and uh, then we'll just see how far we can get with that. I'll probably have to finish it off stream. My intention is to put this puppet up on the shop. So uh, it's it's you know gonna be shop worthy uh, uh, when we're done. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm just sitting here looking at it and I'm planning already instead of talking, which is probably not the way you should stream. Anyway, so there we go. There's what we're doing today. Um, there's a really neat technique for making noses and other features as well, but the nose thing is, is really good. And I want to try and do that on stream. I've only ever done it once before, so it may not work out. We'll see, but, uh, but we'll get to that in a moment. So, uh, it's, it's been a time. It's been a really busy couple of weeks. You can see the latest, the new lizard here for a, a mystery client who I'm not at liberty to talk about, but um, who knows? Uh, Demon Dreamer, are you planning to make a regular pattern out of it uh, for pre-made puppets? That's not a bad idea. Um, hmm, you know what, well, maybe I will put it up. I could even put it up on the direct shop, um, but I'll put it up for quite, like, not a lot of money. Um, because, you know, you could just watch this, the whole point of this video series is you could just watch this and make it yourself, right? Uh, and that's kind of what I want to encourage people to do is like, that's the point of this run of the series is to like demonstrate that this is within your grasp. Like you can, you don't need to buy patterns. You don't need to, you know, it's, it's good to have a pattern library, but you can build that library yourself. So Heath, hello. Wow. All the regulars are here. All we're doing is waiting for Zep, I think. And that's it. Hmm. But yeah, maybe I'll put it up. I don't know. There's actually a bit of work that goes into preparing it as a package and making sure that it's like, you know, user friendly and everything. And uh, so that that would involve some labor. But we'll see. That's not it's not a bad idea. It's it's on the table. Um, but yeah, so that's that's where we're going. So let's have a look at what we got going on here. I don't know what camera we should go to. Uh, maybe we should go to the top cam. Actually, no, let's go to the shoulder cam. I assume y'all can hear me. <laughs> I'm uh, also I'm, uh, switched PCs to uh, now it's a dedicated streaming PC. So I haven't actually tested this live. I'm just making sure that everything's good. We're not overloading the encoder. Everything's good. My mic might be a little hot, actually. Let me, let me just... I saw it hit the red there for a second. I haven't fiddled with the compressor. So let me just turn that down a little bit. Um, G Money, I've made quite a few patterns now. Yeah, good. See, and that's the thing. That's the point. You can do it. Um, and of course, as as you may know, if you're a regular viewer, one of the reasons I kind of decided to do that as a foundation for this series is because somebody did rip me off um, and stole a pattern. And I'm sure it was from one of the live streams. But it's like, you don't you don't need to. It's it's not hard. <laughs> you can just do it. You don't need to clay maquette. You don't need anything. You need a, a pencil and a piece of paper, and that's it. Um, and time and patience, <laughs> right? That, that, that's it. So anyway, here's where we are. We got our, we got our critter here. Now I haven't touched this. I haven't had time to, uh, what I wanted to do was I'm still going, and then we're still going to do this. We're going to, um, wrap this around on the bottom here and glue this down to the boning on the inside. I haven't had time to do that, but it, it, that's what will be done, uh, before this ever, uh, sees a store. Um, 
But yeah, you know, it's a pretty good looking puppet. So what I think, and this is the thing, like, it is a lot of trial and error, absolutely. That is that is the thing, right? So this is why it's like having a resource like uh, Project Puppet or someplace that does sell patterns, it's, it's good to go there and get those patterns and build your library. Um, and, and also those will give you like a starting point, right? To, to iterate and make your own patterns. Um, but it, again, it is all it is all doable. It is all in your grasp. And once you get, and this, this is the thing about making your own patterns, is once you get that, once you've got those patterns, those are yours, you know? Like your puppets won't look like anybody else's puppets because those are your patterns. Even if you just do the same techniques and everything that we've been showing, you have the ability to dial it in and really, really make it yours. And that's uh, a great feeling. And that's, you know, and that's what's gonna set you apart from everybody else is that the people are going to go and look at your stuff and go oh that's a whatever right and you will develop a signature style um and that's a really great feeling and it's a good thing to do and it's it's good for everybody right so there we go rainer mcfarland hello uh i've been absent from the last few streams i've been in a crazy busy uh busy time at work but i've got the day off and ready for action awesome good to see you here you're not on the bus, I take it. Not on the Scottish bus. Um, at least, you know, it, it is cool. I mean, this is the thing. Like, I'm an old man, so I remember when there wasn't this technology. But the fact that we can do that, we can watch a live stream on, you know, a bus. Uh, I love the stand on your monitor. I don't know which... Oh, I, well, yeah, you can see this monitor here, unfortunately. This is on, on an arm, actually. Um, but if you're talking about this, that's the camera. This is this is the little GoPro for the, for the zoom in. Um, I've made quite a few, I've made a few patterns, but the reason I tend to use others is I'm still working on sewing and whatnot. I'm still experimenting. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, when you're starting out, um, it is all about getting used to it, right? It is, it's just, it's repetition. You will find a comfort zone. Um, I do things now without even thinking about it that were a big challenge in the first year of building because... I've just done it so much, right? It is just experience. That's that's the thing. Um, so the question now is, what are we going to do with this? Because this is a, a nice kind of generic blank form. It's very simple, um, but we can go in a bunch of different directions from here, right? Now, y'all know I like monsters. Monsters is my thing. So we're going to do a monster <laughs> with this. Uh, I thought it was an optical illusion. I thought the DSLR uh, stand was the monitor stand. No, no. Oh, no, that's uh, that's just a little mic stand, actually. Yeah, the, the camera, the DSLR over there is on just a, basically a mic stand, like a desktop mic stand. Uh, I'm attempting draping for the first time, but thankfully I've watched enough of your streams to know what I'm doing with it. Good, awesome. Also, we're going to be doing a technique today that is very similar. It is basically draping, but it's a very specific kind of draping. But that's one of the things we're going to be doing today. So good, good time to check in. I'm 49 years old, I've learned uh, I can't thread a needle without <laughs> reading glasses. My friend, I'm 53. I completely understand where you're coming from. Um, same, <laughs> you know. Um, so yeah. So anyway, we're doing we're going to do a monster now. You don't have to, obviously, you can do anything you like, but but this is my puppet, so we're making it into a monster. Um, so when I look at this, and this is the thing, like at this stage, this is the fun part now. Like, it, you know, there's other fun parts as well, but this is where you really get to kind of free form, think about it, be creative, uh, uh, and just kind of go with your gut, right? So, when I look at this, I go, okay, well, it's small, first of all, right? It's, it's a little, it's a little creature. Um, and it's got a big wide mouth and a pretty good overbite. So, <laughs> for the horn, yes. So the first thing I think when I see this overbite, right? I think, you know what would be good if we're going to do a monster? How about like a, just a mouth full of teeth? You know, just little tiny pointy teeth all along the, the top lip, right? That, that stick out. That's so that's one thing. So once you start there, once you kind of get a main feature that you think, okay, this is going to be sort of the focal point, um, then you can sort of iterate off of that and kind of go, okay, well, let's see if it's got like all these little pointy teeth and that kind of suggests a personality, right? That's like a, like a little 
you know, impy, goblin-y kind of thing, right? Of course, goblins are my favorite, so I'm always gonna, I'm always gonna lean towards goblin. Um, but this is more imp. This is more small and cackly uh, imp kind of thing. So when I think about that, um, I think I want like a nice, like a, like a, where are we here? Let's go. Like a pointy nose, like a big, long, pointy, hooked nose. That's the first thing we're going to start to to look at, and um, I don't want uh, I don't want it to be too simple. Like the stuff that we've been doing with the noses, like just the the sausagey noses or the round noses, those are very basic and very simple. But this is going to have a little bit more contour to it. We're going to do nostrils, um, uh, but that's I think the very first thing we're going to start tackling. So there is a technique um, that I learned from somebody on YouTube. Uh, a fellow called Langdon Hatch, who is a puppeteer, puppet builder, and ventriloquist, has a really great technique for, let's go back here for a second, for uh, doing uh, what they call a soft body sculpt with foam and fleece and adhesive. Let me just put the link into chat because their channel is worth checking out. I did, I did copy it over and then I closed the file, of course, because it's me. What else would I do? Uh, where did I put this thing? It must be on the desktop. Here we go. So hopefully everyone will see this. If you're on the VOD on YouTube, this should be in the, in the chat playback. There's Langston Hatch's YouTube channel. They haven't posted anything in quite a while, so I don't know if they're still active or not, but um, worth checking out. And this is, uh, I have kind of taken the technique they show for doing their noses and, um, and kind of altered it a little bit and, and did my own kind of version of it. Now I did this once before and only once before, so and it was a bit of trial and error. So we're gonna do that again today and just see if we come up with something workable or not, but it is a draping technique. So the very first thing we gotta do, let's go to the top cam. Here we are. Um, we need some cardstock. I need a drink, because I've been talking a lot. And get parched. But shout out to Langston Hatch. Um, this is a really neat technique and I like it a lot. And I should use it more often. It is a little bit fiddly and time consuming, so I don't use it as much as I would otherwise, but it is good to learn and good to know. So we're just gonna get a piece of cardstock here and pencil. And so the very first thing we need to decide is what we want the profile. This is, this is gonna be a nose, but this will work for other features as well. Um, so like I said, I want, I want a kind of long pointy nose. So I'm just gonna draw the profile of the nose as I want it, um, bearing in mind that we're going against a curved surface. So we're gonna make the inner curve, like the inner side of the nose curved. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna rough out. Let's say if this is, can you see that? Yeah, okay. So it's gonna be pretty big. Um, that's probably a little too big. I need to just break that down a little bit because you got to remember um, you're, you're going to cover this with fleece so it's going to be bulkier than the thing you draw. So always draw your pattern a little bit smaller than, than what you want the final thing to end up as. But we're just going to kind of go give a nice kind of beak like, right? And so this is only the profile. This is only uh, like the side view, right? Uh, but we'll just rough that out, and that's probably pretty good. So we'll cut that out, and we'll just put it against the puppet, and see how it looks. And if we like it, then we'll use it as our pattern. Okay, now remember, this is going to be a little smaller than what we want the final product to end up as. Let's see, what one should we go to? So many cameras to choose from. All right, this is pretty good, actually. So we'll go here, and so this is 
See, it's pretty good. That's not bad. That'll make it nice. You know, I might might do it a little bit more hooked so it hangs over. Um, but if we are going to put a bunch of teeth in here, it's nice to have the teeth kind of be the star of the show, right? So, so maybe we'll maybe we'll go with this again. Future ones, do a big do more of a hook. Do anything, make it round. Just, just, anything you like. Just draw a profile. So that's real simple, right? Now is where it gets less simple. <laughs> so we have our basic profile. First thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, make that in foam. I am very thirsty today. Excuse me. Also, for the past couple of months or so, I've been having terrible allergy attacks and I'm very sniffly, so I may have to like blow by those occasionally just fyi i will mute the mic when i do so but uh forgive me if i have to because <laughs> of course i have the window open so you know all the allergens we got like a whole bunch of trees out, out the front here so i'm just getting pollen like for days okay so we're gonna make this in foam to start with uh, let me grab a Sharpie. I only keep one Sharpie in play at any one time, because if not, I end up with like 20 Sharpies in that thing. So I always have to hunt around for it a little bit. Because um, I buy these by the box. I go through these a lot, right? So, yes, yeah, spring is definitely here. All right, so we're going to get a piece of foam. This is just some scrap foam I got down here. Um, yeah, that'll do. So I'm going to use reticulated foam for this. I wouldn't normally use reticulated foam for a feature like this that is going to be up against human skin. Um, it's because it's expensive or more expensive than upholstery foam. Um, but uh, reticulated foam is uh, carves much nicer than upholstery foam. You'll get sh sharper angles and cleaner lines with uh, reticulated foam. And that, that matters in this case. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to trace that so this is half inch foam, by the way. Most of the foam that, that I use is half, excuse me, half inch. Um, it's the kind of the most useful all around foam. I also get inch thick foam for when I'm doing like a, a live hands monster or something. The big, the big heads with the eyebrow max. Those, uh, it's useful to have inch thick as well, but half inch is your kind of go-to. Um, it's nicer to get, if you can find three quarter inch, that's great, but that's really hard to come by. So, uh, FYI, if you can get three quarter, get three quarter and that's your go-to, but most of the time you can only get half inch. So we're just going to draw this just like that and we'll cut it out. The oldie razor blade. That's where we're starting. So remember to cut on the inside of the line and keep your blade at a nice 90 degree angle. All right, here we go. So we've got that. Now what are we gonna do? So we know we want nostrils, right? So let's say this is our nose. We're gonna want some nostrils. We wanna put some nostrils on the sides here. Um, so what, yeah, I should have put this away. I always, I always, I've forced myself into the habit of putting the razor blade in my little case here um, by, by instinct, just because it's, it's dangerous to have a naked blade rattling around loose on your work surface, so. This is just a little thing I've trained myself to do. It's not bad, not a bad habit. Um, so if we're gonna do some nostrils, we just really need to make some squares basically. So I'm just gonna cut about half an inch. I'm just gonna eyeball this. These don't need to be super accurate. You can be more accurate than this if you want, of course, but so I'm just gonna cut a couple of little cubes All right and we're gonna just glue these onto the end here now 
Koya, hello, how you doing? I'm good. I hope you're well. Um, we're making a nose. This is going to be a nose, see? So, we want to glue these on, but we don't want to glue these on... Uh, well, actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, hmm, I did that a little bit wrong. Let's make, instead of making cubes, we're going to make little rectangles. We're going to make this a bit longer uh, than we want. And there's a reason for that. So, that's not bad. We'll even these up. Because we are going to end up trimming off a little bit of this. Felt some pain, but I mean, uh, lucky after weeks, it's getting less, so happy with that. Good. Yeah, I don't know if I st had streamed before when I got the news, but I did get some good, speaking of medical news, I did get some actually good medical news lately. My heart, which was, uh, sorry, uh, having to mute due to work. Oh, no, no problem. No, this isn't me in nose. This is going to be no, but it could be an ear. That could easily be an ear. Um, this one particularly is going to be in those, but we can do ears with the same technique. And in fact, if we have time, we will, we will do that. Um, so here we go. So we've got a couple of little rectangles here. Now I'm going to put these on. I'm just going to glue these on. Um, yeah, you know, about where nostrils would be, right? So sort of there, making sure that we keep the long end towards the back. Um, but... The question now is how should we glue this? Let's, I guess we'll use contact cement. It is the thing you should use, but of course it is also a bit of a pain. But let's do it. I was thinking about hot glue for a second. It's like, no, hot glue would be a very bad idea here. Um, yeah, all right, get the barge. I'm not going to uh, switch the mic over for this. Um, just because this will only take a second. So I'm just going to put some gloves on, put the mask on, do this up real quick. Put the fan on, excuse me. Uh, my nose is running already. I went too close to the window. <laughs> Heaven gets dribbly in sprig. Oh, all right. Anyway, this will just take a sec. Uh, hopefully you can hear me. I don't know if you can hear. It looks like the mic is moving, so maybe you can hear me. I'm just going to do these up real quick. Little bit of glue, little bit of glue, not a lot. And then, let's see, I'm not going to hold that. Little bit of glue. Sorry, I'm off camera. Little bit of glue. Only a little bit of glue. All right. Ah, these little pieces. Stop. There's like a piece of fur or something there. Barge away, barge is capped, mask can come off.
Oh, I should have taken my glasses off first. Oops. I'm gonna keep the mask close to hand, of course, because we're gonna need it again. But we're just gonna glue these nostrils on about where you think nostrils should go. Doesn't have to be super accurate, just kind of eyeball it. So there we go. We've got some very square nostrils, right? So the next thing we're going to do is round off some of these square edges. Um, and I think we'll do that with scissors. I do. I have some little uh, little foam cutting scissors that are handy. We're going to need those again. So let's keep them out. So these are, and these are handy because these are curved scissors. So you can kind of, you know, you can get contours and stuff with them. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to just start rounding off some of these harsh edges. You don't have to get too detailed. Just kind of get in there and snip, snip. Make some of these edges less square. Now, of course, since this is a nose, you know what? I'll bet you this is a good candidate for the close-up cam. Here we go. Ah. So yes, all I'm doing is I'm getting in there and just like snipping off. I'm having to look at the thing and not the monitor. So hopefully you can see that. Right, so we're just kind of rounding them off a little bit, just getting the corners off there. Yes, it's uneven. It doesn't matter. It's fine. Um, it's good. It's a monster. What do you want? <laughs> um, so, of course, this being a nose, um, we don't want this kind of square edge here. We want to uh, rounding out edges on foam can help when applying fabric, less stretching. Yes, exactly. And it's also just the contour that you want, right? So. We're going to bring this down to a point uh, and round off the edges as well. This is the same way I make teeth and claws and horns. Anything pointy. We are carving it down quite a bit, but that's okay. You kind of got to let it become whatever it's going to become. So there we go. And it's not too bad. See, we've got a nice sort of contour now. And that was just cutting off the square edges. That's all. So now that we got that, that those nostrils are kind of bugging me. I should have paid more attention. Let's see. We're not too late. We can still pull these off and reposition them. Let's do that. It's kind of bugging me. This is one of the many advantages of contact cement. You can do that. There we go. So now we've got, sorry, now it's, it's tough to get this lined up on the camera. There we go. Those are considerably more even now than they were. Um, so there we are. Now, now that we've got that basic form and that didn't take long. See, that was, that was pretty easy. You glue teeth on contact cement. It depends. If I'm not in a hurry, yes. Um, but of course, you have to be really precise with it um, and have a very small applicator and all that stuff. If I'm in a hurry or if I just I need to not spend a lot of time on something, I will use hot glue for attaching features. One of the few good uses of hot glue is that kind of thing. Um, the disadvantage there being, of course, that uh, hot glue is forever and contact cement is not uh, necessarily forever. So you have more flexibility with hot, with uh, contact cement than you do with hot glue. Um, but there we go. There's a little nose form and that's not bad looking, right? That's all right. You can, you can see where this is going. So the next phase, this is where it gets interesting. Let's go to do this, I think. 
So we can have a look right now. Before we go any further, we can kind of go, all right, is this, is this going in the direction we like? I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. Again, remembering this is going to be considerably bulkier once the fleece goes on it. So that's the next step is we're putting fleece on this. So basically what we're going to do is drape it. Uh, this technique would make a fun beak. Yes, absolutely. Um, and that would actually be a bit easier than this. Um, so we're going to drape it, but we're going to drape it with fabric that's had adhesive applied to it. And this is the Langston Hatch method. Thank you, Langston. Um, so in order to do that, and this is where it gets interesting, I'm going to try using Super 77. Now this tin of Super 77, this is a spray adhesive. Um, it's really, really useful. I've also had this for a couple of years and I don't use it very often. So the, the tip kind of gets gummed up. This may not actually be viable. This may, this may not work. I don't know. The other thing about using spray adhesive is this stuff is an aerosol, obviously. So it just goes into the air and you will create a cloud of literally a cloud of glue. Um, and it will just settle on everything. Be aware of that. So one of the ways you can kind of help control that, A, ventilation. Always have a fan venting outwards, um, which I do. Um, and the other thing is you can use, if you've got a spray booth, like a, for spray painting, that's great. You can make a very crude, simple spray booth. Let me get the puppet out of the way here. This is why we're on this camera. Uh, where should I put this? Hang on, let's put it next to the lizard. The lizard and the, lizard and the frog can take care of it. Okay. Um, I just made this out of a cardboard box. Um, you just basically cut a cardboard box on a bias and there you go. You just make a four-sided cardboard box, a cardboard box with an opening. I just fold this up and I put this under my work surface and this is super, super crude, but very useful because you spray in here and it's going to stop the spray from going everywhere, right? Now, you don't necessarily need to use a respirator. I know it's the camera is kind of being blocked. Let's see if we can do that. Yeah, that's a bit better. Um, you don't necessarily need to use a respirator with this. It doesn't have the fumes that barge does. It will get in the air though. You don't, you don't want to really breathe this in. The ventilation should be enough. So I'm not going to put the mask on for this. I am going to use gloves though. Gloves are important. Um, but just, yeah, be aware that this stuff gets in the air and will just settle on everything. Like get your phone out of the way. Uh, you, what I ended up doing is I ended up feeling it on my arms. I just get this little layer of stickiness on my arm. It's really gross. <laughs> but this stuff is really useful. So uh, it's, it's good stuff to have. It's just not necessarily a whole lot of fun to work with. Um, what we got here? I'm just taking some scrap. This is the same fabric that we made the body out of. And so we get some scrap. And we're just going to sort of figure out how much would we need to cover this nose. Oops, wrong scissors. You want to give yourself quite a bit of room because we're going to be trimming this down. So I'll do. Now. So again, the direction of the stretch matters. So you want this going across, not up and down. So kind of like this is how we're going to be doing it. Um, it's pretty expensive. How often do you have to purchase it? Not often at all. This stuff goes a long way. I, I've had this tin for three years. I don't use it very often, um, which again, may be why I may open this up, spray it, and nothing comes out because the, the tip is so gummed up. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it, yeah, I mean, all, all industrial grade or at least like professional grade adhesives will tend to be a little bit pricey, but um, they're worth it as well. And also they go a long way. Like you don't have to buy them very often. 
Yeah, Shabda Bhatt, absolutely. I'll always be open to different techniques. For some, they work well um, and not for others. And that is absolutely true. Like, I'm just showing you stuff that I do. Again, I've only done this once. I don't know if any of you remember back last Halloween, I did a bunch of Halloween themed smalls. I did a goblin small. Uh, that goblin small's nose was done this way. And that's the only time I've done this. So uh, I also did a similar technique to make Frankie and the Oracle's ears, and they turned out real well. The nice thing about this draping gluing technique is that you can get around, you can kind of sculpt with it. You can get around like uh, uh, contours and things. So that's what's nice about this. So I am going to use uh, gloves. Not necessarily, it's always not a bad idea to use a respirator. I'm not going to bother. Uh, I've worked with this stuff enough that I know that it's fine. But if you're at all, you know, uh, or if you've got like lung issues or whatever, yeah, absolutely use a respirator. Get these gloves able to be used here. So I'm a puppet maker who uh, glues fabric on an entire head. Have you tried something that? Yeah, um, that's again, it's very similar to this. It's just it's just draping, but with glue. Langston Hatch does that. Um, he does whole heads like that. Um, it's a really interesting technique. Uh, I think it might be a bit for doing a whole puppet with Nyla fleece that is not cheap. It might be a bit wasteful because you're trimming off like it's just it's the same as draping. You're trimming off a lot. Um, whereas if you're working from an established pattern, you know exactly how much you need, right? So that's why draping can be a little bit wasteful. Uh, so I don't do it very often because I'm on a budget, but um, it, it is very, uh, it's a very neat technique to learn <laughs> and very useful. Um, and it's also very useful for making patterns, right? Like what you can do is you can drape a thing, uh, trim it all up, get all the darts where they should be, and then take it off and make a pattern from that draping. Um, that's a very uh, common and useful thing. So what we're gonna do, um, you don't, this isn't like contact cement where you need to put this on both surfaces. It's, it's better if you do, but you don't absolutely need to. So we're gonna spray some of this onto the fabric, making sure we know which way the stretch is going. It's going across, not up and down. Um, make sure there's kind of any crap on the, all right, we should be good there. So on the spray booth, here we go. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. Uh, if you sort of dart wrong, uh, it would be a pain to try and turn back outside to pop the stitch if you glue the skin on true. That is true. But that's the thing with draping, right? You just, you're, you're trimming it down, right down to the bone, as it were. Um, so it should be fine. Um, so what we have to think about is the direction of the draping and where we want there's going, there's always going to be a seam. Have you gotten glue on your watch before? I do occasionally. This stuff will probably get on it, but this is an Apple watch. It'll be fine. You can just, you can just wipe off. <laughs> um, although, you know, I'm not advocating, take your watch off. If you have wearing an expensive watch, take your watch off. Um, I should probably do that. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Let's not get glue on the Apple watch. Um, all right, so you are going to end up with one big seam, basically. Possibly some smaller seams, but you are going to end up with at least one big one. You have to decide where you want that seam to go, and that will depend on what direction you drape this from. So we're going to put the seam underneath, right, on the, on the bottom of the nose here. This is going to be a little tricky to see. Hopefully, uh, when I get down to the actual draping part, I can switch over to the close-up cam and maybe that'll be better, but it's gonna be a little tricky to see, but uh, between this and Langston's video, you should be able to get a, a good handle on this. Um, so the first thing before we do that is I gotta see if this stuff is even gonna work. We can do this with contact cement as well, by the way. Um, this is just a little bit quicker and easier. All right, well, there's a lot of glue on that nozzle. Let me see if I can get some of it off without actually spraying myself in the face. Let's see, let's see what happens. Hey, look at that, it's viable. Okay, we got some spray glue. So we're gonna lay this down. Um, the coolest thing, one of the things that 
illustrated to me that my ventilation actually works is because this stuff aerosolizes and just gets little little tiny particles in the air and a little cloud. Um, one day the sun was coming in at exactly the right direction and it was doing like, you know, the God rays. Um, and I could actually watch the particles of glue floating in the air and getting sucked out of the window by the fan. And that's when I knew, ah, my ventilation is good because I could actually watch it happening. It was cool. Um, so here we go. We're just gonna, and we don't need a lot, just like any other glue. Nice, thin, even coat. This stuff also dries a little bit quicker uh, than you than your actual contact cement. So there we go. That's it. That's all we're doing. Just a little spritz, spritz, spritz. I am going to use a hair dryer. Um, you don't really need to. This stuff dries pretty quickly, but this will speed things up. So. Fingers are gonna get sticky, so use gloves. Uh, try a fog machine, <laughs> that's the ventilation, exactly. All right, here we go. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to lay this down right in the middle. I think you can see that um, top side down. So we're going to fold the fabric around it this way. Let's move this out. Fold this up, get rid of this. And hopefully we can do this on the close up cam. Let's see how well is this going to work. So. Um, here, okay, that's not too bad. So all I'm going to do is start pulling this up and stretching it a little bit and pressing it into our contours. And there isn't really a rule for any of this. You just kind of get it, get it in there and press it, you know. I'm not sure how well this is sticking. We may need more glue. But you can see, we're just kind of squeezing it, pressing it in, and we're basically kind of sculpting it. We're just kind of mummifying the whole thing. Um, try not to get wrinkles, obviously. But there we go. Now you can kind of, I'm sorry, I know that wasn't, wasn't the best to watch, but you can see, you know, what we've done. Right? You can see there's the nose in there. So now we're just going to trim away on the back and on the bottom. We're going to try not to trim any here or on the nostrils. It's because we don't want little seams. Uh, we don't want to have to sew up a dart or anything like that. So um, I'm going to take the gloves off for this. Now, what you should use if you can get them for this are things like these. These are nonstick scissors. Looks like a pierogi. Yes, exactly. You're making you're making a ravioli. <laughs> you're making a foam ravioli. Is <laughs> what that is. Um, uh, these are non-stick scissors. These are coated with Teflon, so if you do get uh, adhesive on them, it won't stick to the scissors. It'll come off. Um, these aren't terribly hard to find. I got these on Amazon. So now that you've kind of got the contour, now remember, let's say, like, you know how we had to trim off some of the point when we were carving the foam? You could kind of put that back <laughs> at this point. You could just trim the fleece down to that point. So I think that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna cut it as close as we can get. 
All right, so now we've got this seam here and we're gonna ladder stitch this up. And then on the back, we're gonna cut into the foam a little bit. This is what's gonna be going against the puppet face. All right, so we actually, on the back here, we wanna open that up a little bit. We want it to be like that, right? But uh, we've got a little pointy bit here. We'll sort that out when we stitch it. That's good. But you know, that's all right. Look at that. That's pretty good. It's got these nice little contours, right? I might think about, you know, another version of this that I make this ridge a bit thinner. But this will do. This will work. All right, that went well. I'm glad. <laughs> that was, again, this is the second time I've done this. So, you know, you never know how it's going to go. Um, now, one thing you can do, the Langston Hatch does this, is once you've got it at this stage, you can start like kind of working it. You can kind of pinch it and squeeze it and get that glue to set. No puppet is perfect. It's true. If we have a nose, it's true. The nose has landed. Um, and you could also like sew in here. You can take a, like a, a needle and thread and then put a, a stitch right through this and pull it closed and make little sort of pinches or nostril-like shapes and things like that. But uh, there we go. There's one nose. Look at that. It's a nose right there. So I think maybe at this stage, we'll have a look at it on the puppet before we sew it up. Uh, because, you know, if we're, if we're not happy with it or we want to do a different version of it or whatever, this is the stage at which you're going to decide that, right? So, yeah, yeah, that's all right. Look at that. Again, think of it like with a whole bunch of little tiny teeth in here. It's going to be, that's going to be pretty good. Um, again, I think I might, for another version of this, I might do it a little bit more hooked, but this will be good for this. We'll go with this. Kermit is perfect. Well, my Kermits aren't perfect. Kermit, as a general rule, is perfect, I agree. But, uh... It kills me whenever somebody says to me, oh, your Kermits look perfect. I'm like, would you like the list of how they're not perfect? Because they're not perfect. That's just me being self-deprecating, though. So all we gotta do now, um, to finish this nose, uh, is just ladder stitch up this seam on the bottom here. Um, this Nyla fleece, it, it's okay for ladder stitching. Um, the stuff that's even better is the hand dyed stuff. That's some right here. Um, with the nice knobbly texture. This stuff ladder stitches like stink. This is great. You can hide a seam in this no problem. This is this stuff uh, that you just get kind of, you know, from either Georgia Stage or Puppet Pelts um, that you don't do anything with. This stuff can, it's a little harder to bl uh, blend the seam. But the stuff that is hand dyed, I get this from Weird Kid Store, but you can, you can make regular Nyla fleece look like this by just putting it in the gentle wash uh, in the washing machine, just a little wash cycle, no detergent, obviously. Um, and don't put it in the dryer, just let it air dry. And you can you can make a nice little pilly dobbly texture like this with any with any Nile, please. Um, but we are gonna ladder stitch this, so let's do that, because we'll keep on this camera. I'll try and ladder stitch to the camera. That's gonna be a little bit tricky, but we'll see. Um, so let's get, again, when I ladder stitch, I use a curved upholstery needle. It's easier to get into places. I gotta get some thread here. And we are, when we attach it, we're going to ladder stitch it to the face as well. Um, this seems a little dark. That's fine. It's fine. It'll be fine. Everything is fine. How are you? You don't need these gloves for the moment. But as you can see, that was not hard. You could do fairly complex shapes uh, quickly and uh, and there's a lot you can do like ears are really really great to do like this because you can get nice little contours and stuff it will just it'll just conform the fleece to the shape of whatever you're putting it around um i really really like this technique it's cool and easy so we will get our thread 
Wow, we got a lot of people there. 15, look at that. Hello, all 15 of you. Okay. Live hand sewing. Exciting hand sewing action. We will be going into specific stitching techniques in detail. Um, this is going to be the last video for this kind of series um, because, I mean, this is it. We're, we're effectively done. We're just doing the facial features and that'll be it. Um, so the next stream, we're going to start a new series. Um, and I think you tell me what you want to see, first of all. Um, but my plan, uh, unless I get a, a more urgent suggestion, uh, is to, we're going to do a live hands monster with an eyebrow neck. Maureen, hello. Thank you. I'm wearing, I'm wearing my skull pineapple shirt. I don't know if it comes across. See, they're pineapples, but they're also skulls. <laughs> it's exciting. You can take the goth out of the boy, but, uh, you know, etc. <laughs> All right, here we go. Exciting head sewing action. So we're going to ladder stitch. We're going to start from the tip of the nose and then go uh, and end on the, uh, the nostril end. Uh, so this is where it can be a bit tricky because of course this is all glued together. Now, hopefully enough time has gone by that this glue will have set up. I know it's a off camera. I'm sorry. Oh, I can't do that series. You said pirate on vacation, yes, yar. Um, but we'll just do our best. We're gonna lose a bit of the pointiness uh, from doing this, but you know, what you gonna do? Sometimes you gotta crack your nose to make an omelet, something, something. But yeah, if you would like to see something specific before we get into the simple eyebrow mech live hands monster, do let me know. Um, but if not, then that's where we're going next. And so, yeah, so the idea is that the, the series from now will be like specific things, like more um, dialing in on specific techniques or build types or that kind of thing. I don't know where we can see if I, if I can inch myself closer here so we can get this all on camera. I'm having to look at the thing I'm sewing so I'm not looking at what's on camera so I apologize if I do drift off out of frame. But it's uh, better to do that than mess up a puppet, right? I thought this close-up camera would come in so handy, but it sure does. So what I usually do, if I'm going to ladder stitch something like this, I'll, uh, as I'm going, I'll kind of pull some fibers out. Um, makes it easier to see and blend in the end. What time are we at here? A whole hour. We've been going a whole hour already. I can't believe it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to get to the... Well, you you tell me what you would like to see next. So what we can do is we can do ears. And that's pretty much exactly the same technique as this. So maybe that's not the best thing to do. Um, or I wanted to do eyelids uh, for the eyes. So that might be worth showing. I think more than this, because the idea is like this is going to be done today, no matter what, if it's on stream or not. Um, so you tell me what you'd rather see, ears or eyelids.
the audio levels? Is the music is the music good? Uh, I have trouble getting eyelids without wrinkles. Okay, all right, we can surely show that. Oh, another thing, uh, as you're ladder stitching these, um, if it is curved, the tighter you pull this, you, you can kind of make more of a curve. Uh, don't pull it too tight, obviously, but um, you can you can kind of even sculpt as you're stitching. So that's something to be aware of. And that's true with like the, the sausage noses that we showed before. You can you can make a curve happen. Eyelids for sure. All right, you got it. We're doing eyelids next. Um, I won't I won't stitch this to the face. We'll pin it onto the face, but I won't stitch it on. Well, so we can just make sure that we have enough time to get to the eyelids. Oh yeah, this is being a little bit, a little bit crunchy on the seam, but that's all right. We won't worry about it. Nose is so hooked, it's hooking thread. But yeah, I really dig this technique, so thank you, Mr. Hatch. Uh, for demonstrating it, because it was very, very handy. I'm kind of rushing a little bit because we want to make sure we get the eyelids in. It'll be all right. I'm glad that worked. There was a chance that it wouldn't work. Failure is always an option. But it's like I have said multiple times before, the only difference between an amateur and a professional is when a professional messes up, they know how to deal with it. It's not that they don't mess up, they absolutely do, but they don't panic. You'll excuse me, it is time for the first nose blow of this stream. Excuse me a moment. Delightful. <laughs> hey, we're almost there. We're almost there. I'm doing slightly larger stitches than I really should do, but we're trying to get through this. It'll be fine. Just a nose. What do people expect out of a nose, huh? I think next we will pin this onto the face and then we will do some eyelids. A <laughs> nose blowing mech. If I could make one of those, I'd have one already. I just have a robot deals with it.
it's about this year I've had seasonal allergies on occasion, but this year it's just bananas. It's just off the charts. This with the nose thing, it does, you're right. It means I'm gonna have to do the eyebrow mech with my eyes closed. Not advisable. All right, here we go. We are at the end. Let's tie it off. Sorry, I'm off. Off a of frame, of course. Through. Tie it off. A little snippy snip and now we go there's there's our nose and I see that that curve became more hooked as I sewed it because I was pulling a little bit tighter um, and that's a good thing we wanted a little more hooked so that'll look great um, so speaking of looking great let me put this needle in a safe place not just sitting on the work surface Kevin uh, let's go to the shoulder cam here we go. So, get our critter here. And, where are we at? All right. So, all you do is you pin this where you want it um, using the center line, assuming you have one. Very faint, but it is there. Again, I'll, I'll square this up and make this a little bit more symmetrical later, but... In, because I'm hitting the mouse plate. There we go. You know, I think I use a slightly different fleece. <laughs> I think the fleece for the nose is a little bit lighter. <laughs> Oops, that's all right. Uh, it's a good thing I'm not stitching this on because I think I'm going to make a different nose for the finished product. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, that is, that is a little bit lighter. It isn't quite the same fleece. Oh, well, that's all right. Um, like I said, I'll make a, I'll make this I'll remake this nose with the right fleece. But you know, all right, there we go. We're getting there. So all the all that you do then after pinning it on is just ladder stitch around the whole seam. That's it. Um, so there we go. There's our nose. So now let's take care of some eyes. Uh, we'll go to this can. Put our imp back. Watchful care of the frog and the lizard. Nose blowing mech isn't too far fetched. I would use an eyedropper uh, that's used for essential oils. Hmm. We're getting very Rube Goldberg here. I made a nose blowing mech out of an old mouse trap game. Let me get this thread back. Uh, okay, so. Next thing, actually, I should I put him back, put them back, because it's not gendered. Trying to use gender neutral language. Um, we have to decide what kind of eyes. That's the next thing. Um, yeah, oh, that's really bugging me. That nose is, or is it bugging me? I don't know. Maybe I like it a bit lighter. Yeah, we'll see. Um, so I've got. I mean, you could do anything with eyes. I have some some pre-made here, so let's see what we got. Um, these are all from Puppet Pelts, but you can make your own. You can cast them, you can cut ping pong balls in half. There's lots of stuff you can do. These are just what I have kind of in stock. Um, it's pretty good. <laughs> 
So I I think because this is going to be a little cackly imp, uh, I think we want big eyes or or very small eyes, right? Um, but for what I have in mind, so what I think I want is like big eyes with a big uh, eyelid underneath, but not on top. So they're all kind of intense, right? So I think we're going to go with these. These are 42 millimeter domes. These are the biggest that I have without making them myself. But that's pretty good. Big or beady, exactly, yeah. So the other thing, of course, is uh, just use some doll eyes. Just use little tiny beads. Um, but I think I think that's pretty good. I don't think we need to see any more. So I think that's it. That's pretty good. Nice, big and bulgy. And Steve Buscemi, we're making Steve Buscemi as a goblin. <laughs> what is not a stretch? I'm sorry, Steve. <laughs> um, I also have these. These are. These are 35 millimeter, but they're also like flat. They're not, uh, uh, they're not, they're not whole hemispheres. And I've used these on smalls quite a bit. These are pretty good too, but I think these are a little too, a little too small for what, for what we want. Maybe <laughs> you selfie. <laughs> Um, and these are also 35 millimeter, but these are domes as well. Um, they're going to be too small. So I think we'll go with these 42 millimeter domes. Now, here's something. So if you get things like this, and these are all from Puppet Pelts. In fact, it's probably a Puppet Pelts label on here somewhere. There we go. Puppet Pelts. Um, they're, they're just uh, made out of inject molded plastic. Uh, and this was the close up. We need a lot of use for the close up cam. So, as you can see, when you these just come out of the package, uh, they're very glossy. Now, if you want that, that's fine, just use them as is. But generally speaking, particularly for a puppet that's going to be used on camera, you don't want anything glossy on that because the lights are going to reflect off of it. And even though it's an eyeball and it should be glossy, you don't want it glossy. Um, so what I always do with these is I just take a piece of sandpaper and I lightly, it's a very fine grit sandpaper, and I just very lightly sand these to take the gloss off of them. That's all. Um, so what's, I don't know, is this good for, because to, to sand them, I sand them over the garbage pail, which is over here, and there's no camera that can, I'll do it over here, because this is, you know, this is a nice camera, right? Ah. Goodness. We are motoring today. I slept okay last night, so that's why I have energy. Um, sandpaper. I don't know what the grit is. I, I've never been able to memorize sandpaper grits, but it's very, very fine. You don't want scratches and stuff, right? So it's, it's very, very smooth. Just want to take the gloss off, nothing more. I'll do one and then I'll show the difference. And it is quite uh, a stark difference in leading this way. But I do this over the garbage pail just because there's like, you know, you're making plastic dust basically. So you don't want to get that stuff around. And also like, oh, you know what, before I even go too far with this, I'm going to get some paper towel ready because this stuff will make like chalk dust. Uh, and you don't want to get that on your pup head or just, you want to be able to wipe it down, right? So. Beware of the dust. It's not going to make my nose running any better. Yeah, I only mentioned that I slept well last night because it's so rare. It's worth mentioning. Excipers, we go from hand sewing to sanding. Ooh. Some some very nice person on Twitter yesterday told me that their 12 year old, uh, they, they were watching one of my streams, VODs, and their 12 year old said he's like the Bob Ross of puppets. 
That's the nicest thing anyone said to me all week. Mission accomplished. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna wipe it down so we don't have dust everywhere. That is the goal. You are correct. All right, so let's go back here. So here is this out of the box, the plastic dome. And here it is, which is a very light sanding. Now you see it's got a bit of texture. It's actually because it's not totally even, but that's good. You actually want that. It reads very nicely on camera. A lot of times, particularly for TV shows and stuff, what they'll do is they'll take an, an eye like this and they'll actually uh, like spray paint it uh, with some shading. They'll actually go like a very light spritz of like gray or something uh, just to give it some really nice contour so the camera kind of picks up that it's a, a surface rather than just a flat color, right? Uh, I want to make a YouTube channel for art and puppet stuff. Uh, but I'm still getting over that uh, camera Freddy feeling. Oh, believe me, I get it every time, every single time. Um, the secret is to just do it, right? And, and the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll get with it. Um, but yeah, there we go. So you see, now this, this, I, a lot of people like really go, oh, I, I like to resin cast my eyes. And that's great, absolutely. This is indistinguishable from a resin cast eye, if you ask me. You, you cannot tell by looking that this is a plastic eye. This looks identical. So this is what I do. Um, and again, because it saves time. These are, these are fantastic because these are the safety eyes that have the big peg and washer system. So these snap down, these hold really well. Um, I like these a lot. Also not cheap, but they also weigh nothing. So let me just do the other one here and we will get to the eyelids. Another thing, if you're going to do eyelids that you're gluing down, the Whitmire Cave is on 10 p.m. Eastern, anyone else watching? Um, that, is that the thing he does with his with his scroll character? I actually emailed uh, Steve Whitwire a while ago. I, had, I hadn't seen that um, before. I did Frankie the Oracle, and I realized, like, Frankie the IT troll and Steve Whitwire's troll character are really, really similar. So I emailed him, or I messaged him on uh, Instagram, saying, hey, um, I didn't know you were doing this. So, uh, hi, uh, big fan. Um, please don't be mad. Never got back to me, but you know, just just so he knows that I I no, I didn't actually steal your idea. <laughs> I felt really bad when I saw that. We launched, he launched that, and I launched the Oracle about the same time. Uh, I just, I didn't know he was doing it. So it's an unfortunate truth about a lot of content creators don't watch a lot of other people's content just because we're so busy making our stuff that. We just don't have time. Be 100% inspired by troll will to, we should form the troll. This is what I said to Steve was like, we should just form the, the troll alliance, right? Uh, I don't think that's, you know, Steve's troll is definitely a troll troll, right? So like, Frankie's just, he's got a good heart. Uh, yeah, yeah, Steve's troll is, is much, uh, much more mean spirited than Frankie. Frankie's just a bit gruff, but, uh, He's not actually you. All right, here we go. So um, what I was going to say is another thing to do, uh, if you're going to do eyelids, there's a weird shadow. What's going on? Oh, you know what that is? That's that's the close-up cam. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, if you're going to do eyelids that you're gluing down to the eye, also sand it because it will give the glue uh, a better surface to glue onto. Um, so what are we going to do? Let's go to the top. So the first thing we got to decide is what color do we want to do the eyelids? Now, of course, you could do the eyelids the same color as the skin, and that's great. Um, but I always like to do a contrasting, either a contrasting or complementary color, but I like doing a different color eyelid. For this character, 
again, this is one of those like, what what does the character want, right? If this is going to be a little a little cackling imp, um, I think maybe a, a purple would be good. Let's see what we got in the scrap pile here. Something like this might not be too bad. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. Yes, color theory is very helpful for this kind of thing. I just kind of feel it. I just, I just go with my gut. Um, uh, black and only lower lid. Yes, absolutely. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna do the eye line actually. I don't like doing eye line when I do a lower li a lid only. I like doing a little fold rather than uh, the eye line, like the you know the black liner. Um, but we'll see. We'll, we'll we'll get there in a sec. But yeah, I think I think this is pretty good. I like that a lot. Um, it's a very very common color combination for me. It's because I like it. That's why I do it. Kinzo, hello. Um, so let me show you a little thing. I've shown this on stream before, but it's uh, since we're spe specifically doing eyelid stuff, let's talk about it again. So what we want to do now, of course, is be able to mark where we want our eyelids and mark them evenly on both eyes. How do you do that? Um, there's a bunch of techniques, but this is what I have come up with. Let me get this and show you this. So. This, my monitor went off, there we go. This is an empty box. This happens to be uh, extra large ping pong balls, which, you know, every puppeteer, puppet builder's probably got. Um, but this, just, it doesn't matter what it's a box of, it just matters that it's a box. Um, and then what I did was I made this. So this happens to be the right size for this. This doesn't have to be 42 millimeters, whatever this is, but I, Traced a circle with a circle template, marked points, made a hole exactly in the middle, and they made another hole lower down. That's a, that's a pivot point. So what we can do is we can take our eye that's got this little peg here and just push it down in there and it'll stay there. And then what we can do, get our compass. It's currently covered in plastic dust and put the point at the end of the compass in that other hole and then decide how far up or down where we want the lid and just move your compass to that point and hold this down and just draw your line. Right? Yeah, you can kind of see that. And we can take one off, put the other one on, draw your line and that line will be in the same place on both eyes. Very, very handy, very simple, but useful little rig. And you can put any size sphere on here or, or uh, dome on here. It doesn't really matter what, what size it is, but this is like really handy, really, really useful. So now that we know that's where we're gonna put our eyelids. And like I said, we're gonna do the eyelids on the bottom only. And we're, we're probably gonna do like sort of half, uh, half pupils. But we'll see when we get there. Um, we can do Super 77 with this actually. Super 77 is a really good thing to do uh, for this kind of eyelid. Maybe we should get the spray booth out again. You can also do this with contact cement. But if I do it with Super 77, I don't have to wear a mask. Maybe we will. Get our imp out of the way here. See, I'm already referring to it as an imp. That's good. It means the, the character is starting to happen. Um, so what I think I want to do, like I said, I don't want to do a black a black line on the bottom. It looks, it always looks to me, if you do just a bottom lid and a black line, it just looks to me like you've turned the eyes upside down. Man, I don't really like that. So what I'm gonna do instead of that is I'm gonna take the top bit and I'm gonna fold it kind of like that. 
And so it will make like a little ridge, like a little finished edge. Uh, Heath, hello, welcome back. Uh, and that will that will kind of give a little a little ridge still, but it's not going to do the color thing. It's not going to make it just look like you took taken an eye and turned it upside down. Um, well, let's see. Do we think this is enough? I'm not sure that's enough. Let me see if I got any more. We just need a good solid chunk of it. I should have. I mean, I've got a whole bolt of this stuff, but it, this is a good place to use your scrap. My scrap is currently literally the entire underside. I should take the handheld cam and just show you this. Let me, let me see if... <laughs> okay, you ready for a horror show? This is behind the scenes. This is what it looks like under my work table. <laughs> That's terrifying. Don't do this to yourself. This is awful. It only looks neat from, from the waist up, right? <laughs> oh, the secret's out. Um, so I don't have another decent sized piece of this purple, but what I do have... <laughs> that's what my color maker of fabric is like now. Um, I have this purple, which is actually kind of nicer, and... Uh, this is the hand dyed stuff. So this has got the nice novelty texture on it. I think maybe we'll use this. I like this stuff a lot. It's very soft. You're not supposed to share the ankle. <laughs> this is the clean ankle. We know it is. Yes, I know. We're all friends, so we're sharing. Um, let's see. Don't. I don't really measure any of this. Um, we should, we do want a fairly straight line, so let's actually draw a straight line. Madman is drawing a straight line. How do you even... So I'm making sure the stretch is going sideways. Uh, relative to the top, so this is going to be the top edge, so the stretch is going this way. Let's give us a line to follow. Sharing is caring unless you're Rocket Raccoon, it's true. So we're just gonna try and cut as clean a line as possible. Remember, we are gonna fold this, so it's a little bit ragged, it's okay. Here we go. And we're going to go down, we're going to give ourselves a lot of, a lot of room. There we go. And then we'll just cut this in half. The very first thing we want to do is put some glue along this edge and then fold this over. Now, unfortunately, despite my best efforts, the best way to do that is with contact cement. So we are going to have to get the mask out. Wah, wah. But that's that's the best way to do this. You have the most control. All right. Um, speaking of masks, let's get the mask. On. I think it's time. I'm gonna blow my nose before I put the mask on. That's good forward planning. One sec. Um, so what we need to do here is we're gonna we're gonna paint some glue. I'm gonna say all this before I put the mask on, just so you can understand what I'm talking about. But um, we need to put glue just along the edge here, right? Because this is a fairly small, fiddly little bit. Um, one of the ways that I have found to do detail work is I get these. These are just um, cosmetics applicators, um, but these are better than like a Q-tip type cotton swab because the the cotton swabs. Um, because it's just a wad of, of fibers, they, they come off, they get all fuzzy and everything. And these are just like a little bit of foam on a stick. So these are handy and there's dirt, dirt cheap. So I use these for I'm doing like little, little fine painting of, of the glue, the barge. 
Time to get the gloves again. Um, those are the ones I just used. I'd like to reuse gloves as much as I can. I will forget the mic's probably going to sound a bit weird for a second. I am going to turn on the mic on the mask. Um, just, just so to make sure you can hear me. Twelve thirty. Okay, we got half an hour to do this. I'm making a little bit long. It doesn't really matter. The only thing, the only reason it matters is because I won't get a lunch on time. That's all. Hope I just don't stop for lunch. All right. Hopefully you can mostly understand what I'm saying. Um, so all we're going to do is paint a little line of glue along this edge, dry it, and then fold it over. Audio is still fine, I just haven't been talking. I'm getting into the Zen of glue. Another little tip um, that I probably should say when I've got the mask off, but we'll try it. Um, if you ever need to cut a really clean edge, <laughs> this sounds like Minecraft, yeah. Um, what you can do is this. You can put the glue on, dry it really well, and then cut, and you'll get a nice clean, clean line, a clean edge. Uh, that's a good, uh, good little tip there. Yeah, this music is Game Chops. They do like remixes of game music. Very well, maybe something for Minecraft. I haven't played enough Minecraft to know. I can use this music and nobody will sue me. And the video won't get taken down off the internet. All right. So now we've got to dry this. You've got to dry it fairly well. No, Game Chops is uh, completely uh, um, Creative Commons. It's, it's open source. Not open source, but like you're free to use it. Off topic, but does Grover has beads in his arm? It's possible. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't do that. I haven't done that yet. I suspect that there's something in there, but like wooden beads, uh, wooden beads would be relatively heavy, and I don't like putting anything heavy in my puppets. So, but I, it seems like there might be something in there.
All right, so. We're just folding this over. Oh, let's see. Are you here? Yeah. Folding it over as evenly as you can. You see, we're just creating a little little ridge. There we go. So you see, when you go on the front side now, a little hard to see though, when this gets stretched across, this will be a nice little finished edge here. Since we've got the barge and the mask and everything, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this with contact cement. So, back here. I'm not putting glue all the way to the edge. I'm kind of using the ridge as a guide. You want it pretty well covered though. Using more glue on this than I would on foam. Ever had the barge leak through with a thinner material like polar fleece? Yes. You do have to be aware of that. Don't put too much on. Uh, two thin coats is much better than one thick one. Yes, that can happen. All right, and we're also going to put the contact cement on the part of the eye where the eyelid will go. You got to be real careful with this because you want that right up against the line, but not over the line. It's true. Rushing always takes more time 
in the end because you have to correct for mistakes. Take your time, do it right the first time. The other thing you want to make sure you do is do the underside, the little edge along the bottom. I'll show you why. What we're going to do is we're going to wrap the fleece around. And it'll make a really nice finished edge. <laughs> yeah, true. Sometimes you have to make the mistakes to know what the mistakes are. All right. So now we're going to dry. You want this pretty dry. All right, I'm going to cap the barge and then take the mask off. Ooh, all right. Turn the mic on the mask off. There we go. It's amazing how quickly the, the fumes go away. I don't smell it at all. Um, so, now is the fiddly bit. I um, wonder if we can do this on the close-up. This may be a mistake because I may, I may mess up. <laughs> but anyway, um, so what I usually do for this is I'll start in the middle. It's in the middle of the fabric and the middle of the eye. Just to make sure I have enough room. And I'll sort of tap it down right in the center and then you want to sort of pull and stretch it along the top like along the line along the ridge you do want to give it a pretty decent amount of stretch so now that's on just this one surface Right. So now we've got this under here. So we just want to sort of pull and stretch it to, to even out all of the wrinkles, all right? And press it down, get rid of the wrinkles. So now's the part I talked about. This is why you want to put glue on the inside of the ridge as well. We're going to fold it over and press that down onto the ridge. We're actually going to sort of tuck it inside. And 
if that makes any sense. I hope it makes sense. Tell me if it doesn't make sense. All right, now that looks like a big old mess. Don't worry, we'll deal with that in a sec. Let's do the other one. Sometimes you have to go back and, and touch it up a little bit, but that's fine. That is the case with almost everything. Fold it around. And all you're doing is you're sort of pulling and stretching and you're trying to get rid of the wrinkles. We talked about before, I can't remember who it was. Was it Demon Dreamer? I said they were having trouble getting wrinkles out of their eyelids. This is it. You just basically gotta stretch it. Stretch it and stick it down to the glue. So it may be that your glue isn't dry enough. It's not grabbing it. There we go. We have it all nice. And sometimes you'll get a little bit of fold or something. It's still fine. Okay, so now that we're here, now that we got this, now all we've got to do is trim away, but we're not going to trim right up to the edge. We're going to leave that little, leave that little lip, and then we'll fold that over and, and really glue. And once this goes on the head, this will be glued down, or I mean, um, snap down really tight, and this will hold everything in place. I didn't, see, here's one mistake. I didn't, uh, you can see a little bit of the line. That's okay, I'll get in there with an eraser and, and take that away. Because uh, it's only pencil. So that's fine. Um, I think it was because I didn't stretch it under the ridge. Yeah, that's, it, it's really helpful. And also, like, if you're doing this over, like, a ping pong ball or something, it's a little trickier. Um, but yeah, always, always fold it over on the edge like that and then underneath, right? That's the secret. So, now that we're not dealing with wet glue anymore, um, again, using our, where did I put them? Our non-stick scissors. So we're gonna trim, but we're not gonna trim too close. We're gonna leave a, leave a nice allowance. All right, this, this big old chunk, again, it looks messy. It'll be fine. This is just where you want to sort of trim away what you don't want. But then we're just going to fold it all over on the inside. These edges are a little bit, a little bit thick. Uh, if you are going to do an eye line, like with felt or craft foam, I prefer craft foam personally. Um, that's what will help if you if you take it and you go around and then you wrap it around the inside. That really helps hold it down. It's really all about stretching the fleece and then just trimming it up, but making sure we've got that nice folded wrapped around the inside, right? And there we go. There's our, there's our eyelid. Do the other one. And again, the other thing is sometimes it's not going to be perfect. You've got to just roll with that. Perfection is the goal, and that goal is rarely attainable. But that's okay. So sometimes what I'll do, if I've got a bit that isn't that isn't sitting the way I want to, that's when I might take some hot glue and just like tack it down inside. This is a quick kind of thingy. But there we go. Folks, we have a couple of eyes with our eyelids. So let's see, what's our time like? 10 minutes. I don't really want to rush with putting the holes in the head um, for the eyes, because that's something you should take your time with, like everything else. So I'm not gonna do that, but let's just have a look at what we got here. 
Let's see. How's this going? Take it a little closer like that, it's probably pretty good. And then we can do big half pupils. It'll look really intense. Uh, so there we go. Where are we at? Nine minutes. Whew. How would you wrap a ping pong ball and not get it all bunched up? Ah, very good question. Uh, where'd you get those eyes? These eyes are from Puppet Pelts. And it's the only place I have found to get these. I would love to find what their supplier is, but I looked and I cannot find. Um, how would you wrap a ping pong ball and not get it bunched up in the back? I'm having a lot of issues, no doubt. I don't know. Um, if it's a whole, if you're trying to get a whole ping pong ball, um, you basically do the same technique but you, do, you are going to end up with like a little nodule at one point. You, you wrap the whole thing, stretch it around, and then usually what you do, I can... Unfortunately, this is already cut, but this is a little nose. It's made out of a, a sphere of EVA foam, and I did it like that. Put the glue on, wrap it around, stretch it, stretch it, stretch it, and then take a, a elastic bands and get the, get the bunch in the back as tight as you possibly can wrap it in elastic bands, let it sit for like 72 hours for the glue to set up, then trim off the uh, uh, the little the little bunch in the back. That's really the only way. You can't, at least I can't, <laughs> uh, completely cover a sphere perfectly in fabric without having at least one point of, uh, you know, where that bunches up. But that's just, that's where you attach it to whatever you're going to attach it to, right? So... That's that. Q and A. Q's turned into A's, as they say on the tech pod. Ah. I saw the mobile forums. They mentioned a manufacturer uh, in the USA, but you had to order like 100,000 eyes. Yeah, no doubt. So there's that. Plastruct is a place I know that a lot of people get their plastic domes. They're not like these though. Those are those are just plastic domes. These have like the, the peg and washer safety eye system, which is great. Um, when you do the live hands monster, are you thinking of boiling the fur or will you cover uh, uh, trimming the fur? We're going to do trimming. I haven't done boiling yet and that is on my personal agenda at some point. Um, it's just I, you know, I would have to take over the kitchen and it would be fur everywhere and it would be a bit of a mess domestically so it's not um super viable for me to do i would love to try it though um yeah no problem we should we should do stuff like you know what what i'll do hmm i'll save up like a text file for like little things like that that we can do like one stream that we just do a bunch of little things like that like how do you cover a sphere or that you know that kind of thing jb you you are literally uh, six minutes away from the end. Well done. <laughs> you made it. Just in time. Just squeaked out of the door like Homer throwing his uh, tax return under the post office door. Oh. We're doing, we're doing well though. We got, uh, we got, we got to this far. We got a nose. We got a nose and we got a couple of eyes. We just haven't attached them yet. So I think what we're going to do is um, I will finish this, I don't know, today, maybe not today, but maybe sometime next week. Um, and let's get these out of shot. Let's get the bottle of water out of shot. What are you, a professional or not? Um, I will finish this uh, off of stream just because I want to get it done because we're going we're gonna to move on uh, next stream, like I said, to uh, a new puppet. So... Uh, I will obviously post pictures on social media uh, of what the finished imp looks like, but uh, the techniques that we did today are applicable to all kinds of things. Like ears are very, very easy to do like this, and you can make really nice contoured ears. Again, that's how Frankie and the Oracle's ears were done, exactly like this. Um, so there we go. I hope that was instructive. We did it from zero, from scratch, from a pencil and a piece of paper, got to here. So, 
uh, Restream, congratulations. You received 100 messages on chat today. Thank you, Restream, once again. Okay, I think that's going to do it. I'm hungry. Um, so I'm going to go eat food because that's what you do when you're hungry. Ah. <laughs> Yet another great learning from observation and experience. Thanks, again. Kevin. See you next time. I am happy to have you here. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. As always, um, next stream should be... Let's have a look at the calendar. In theory, the 13th of May, which is a Friday. Awesome. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? The good news is the streaming PC held up. We didn't have any issues. We didn't have any drop frames or anything. So that's good. Um, thank you, everybody. I hope you have a great day. Hope you have a great weekend. As always, you want to you want to shoot me a coffee? You could do that here. Um, check the link tree for all of my links. Check social media to see the finished products, and you will know. Thank you, Rainier and Farland, as if I had to remind them. I feel bad now. Thank you, anyway. Um, much appreciated. I'm getting hoarse. I'm going to go. Have a good day. Uh, and we will hopefully see you next time. <laughs>